And they will be more powerful, more firepower with Kyrie Irving back. Uh, probably not much longer for him to be out. He practiced for the first time with the team today. And Nets coach Steve Nash said it's great to have him back in the building. He expects Kyrie to play tomorrow against the Cavs. Kyrie missed the last seven games due to personal reasons and COVID protocols. And here he was addressing the media for the first time. Take a listen. I'm wondering if you were aware that you had violated the health and safety protocols and what that process was like for you in coming back and going through that investigation one and then secondly what your communication was like with the team while you were away. Happy to be back. Happy to be around these guys. Address the team. Address everybody that needed to be addressed. Now it's time to move on. I just was circling back on the health and safety front. Happy to be back. Thank you. I'm a hometown kid, so, you know, things hit a little different when, um, you know, family or personal stuff going on, and that's up to me to handle that as a, as a man. Um, but, yeah, I just take full accountability for my absence with the guys and, you know, just had a conversation with each one of them, and we move on. It's, you know, pretty interesting in watching when you take a break from everything. There's just so many assumptions about what's going on, and so many people feel like they know me best. They have no idea who I am nor what I'm about, nor what I stand for, or even attempt to take the time, or even for me to invite them to take the time. So it's a two-way street. Um, and when things become overwhelming in life, you know, you just got to take a step back and realize what's important. That's a big thing. I just want honesty. And in order to be honest, I got to be honest myself. <laughs> and that's the first thing. So I know I can talk in circles, and I know all these words get used, but I'm just being honest here. It's, it's been a lot. Um, to balance and now it's I called for help <laughs> and now I have just so many mentors and so many people reaching out and you know just taking things off my plate that were never mine in the first place and they are better suited for that position so I'll play my role on this big team of changing the world and others will do the same. So pretty expansive there at the end. Richard, what's your reaction to Kyrie's comments? Well, I, it, look, you know, people, I actually got criticized when I said I hope he gets whatever, you know, emotional, whatever, m you know, mentally, you know, whatever help he needs, whether it's a lot going on mm -hmm. and he needed to have mentors, people reach out to him, people check in. I said, I said that a couple weeks ago. said that on the show a couple days ago, yeah. Because it's more of like, hey, Kyrie, if Kyrie needs some time, we all get overwhelmed. And athletes are, it's the literally the only job where you don't just get to be like, hey, you know, I need a couple days off. Now, I understand the money. I understand the months off. But if in the middle of the thick of it, you're dealing with something and you need to take time off, shout out to, you know, Kevin Love and DeMar DeRozan that mm -hmm. have really talked a lot about, you know, dealing with their mental health. And so whatever he needed, if he got what he needed and he now has an infrastructure that will allow him to deal with it, Good for him. I'm glad to have him back. Yeah, it was good to just see him smile. Yeah. You know, just to have him back. He's one of our game's greats. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we all go through our trials and tribulations. And <clears throat> the only thing is, when you go through these things, it's about the respect of the organization mm -hmm. and your teammates. The constant, because when he first went away, it was no communication. Nobody knew what was going on. That's what your teammates, that's what the organization is there for you to help you in, in those times. I know you have family, they can help you also. It's just the only thing I had a problem with was the communication. We all, like I said, we go through the things that we go through in life, and sometimes it's tough to step away from the game. But I use the game to help me get through these things also. Mm -hmm. I like needed to be on the court when I went through my trouble. I needed to be in practice. I needed to be around guys who relate mm -hmm. uh, to some of the things that we all go through as professional players and, and role models. Yeah. And, and Kyrie right. noted that his family lives Close. locally right. and that he said that hits different. Obviously, your involvement with your family, if something is going on in your family or even if something's just going on with him, everybody is there is. and around, yeah. which yeah. is a little uh, bit different. Home is not, but, but one of the things that he talked about was like, oh, well, a lot of people just started to assume. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what happens when people assume is because there was no communication. So I think they're like, he takes some ownership of this. I think people that were, you know, questioning him or criticizing, not criticizing him, but more of like asking him what was going on or alluding to different things. Mm -hmm. Well, that also falls on you, right? That falls on you to communicate like, hey, I'm dealing with some personal stuff. I need some time away. And, you know, hopefully he learns from this. And if, if he needs more time or whatever it is, it can be addressed. I mean, look, he did say, he said, people assume they know about me. And he said, without even talking to me. And then he very quickly corrected himself. He said, or I don't want to let them in to talk 
to me, and he said that's a two-way street, which I certainly appreciated him making that distinction. There were repeated questions at the beginning of, hey, what was going on with you, basically? And you heard him say over and over again, hey, I've addressed it with the people I need to address. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that there was enough information there, especially eventually as he got into talking more, for Brooklyn Nets fans, fans of the team? He doesn't owe, and this is, I, I want to say this as a, as a person that has been a net lifer, he <coughs> owes the fans very little. And I mean this from a respect place. He owes the teammates. Mm -hmm. He owns because he, you know, hypothetically you could be traded, you could retire, and, and the fans, like, you don't owe them an answer. Barry Sanders, they're still looking for him in Detroit, <laughs> right? Calvin Johnson, they're still looking for him, right? Like, you can up and retire and not say anything to anybody. So I don't say that. You owe it to the people in the locker room, the people that have supported you, the people that you go to war with, the people that you go to battle. And if those guys are cool, mm -hmm. then it's not up to the media, it's not up to the fans, it's only the people that he has to show up but, with every yeah, day. You say the people who support him, the fans support him. I understand that, you know, but you can't, is... you can't, if you've got millions and millions of fans, you can't individually address them. You can't tell everybody. No, you've got to have I mean, some parts of your life that are private. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's my only thing, is that as long as the people in the locker room are okay with him, then Kyrie can move forward and be the great player that he is, right? It, it's just tough when, you know, you're that individual well, and you feel like you owe a lot of They go out and play well, win games, everybody will forget everything. There you go. Yeah. Well, it looks like they're playing well already <laughs> without him. And then, boy, just add another elite player into the mix. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.